Breaking tonight, a cabinet shakeup. President Trump announces Kirsten Nielsen is out as Homeland Security Secretary. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Kevin McAleenan is taking over. Evening, everyone, and welcome to The Next Revolution. I'm Steve Hilton, and this is the home of positive populism, pro-worker, pro-family, pro-community. Kirsten Nielsen herself tweeting this evening to the men and women of her former department, saying in part, quote, I submitted my resignation to the president this evening. I am eternally grateful and proud of what you do each and every day to protect our homeland. Each of you are why I came back to serve my country. Nielsen also released her resignation letter in which she writes, I hope that the next secretary will have the support of Congress and the courts in fixing the laws which have impeded our ability to fully secure America's borders and which have contributed to discord in our nation's discourse. Nielsen's tweet came not long after the president released his own, announcing the news of her departure as well as her acting replacement Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Kevin McAleen. And all this happening less than a day after President Trump returned from a widely publicized trip to the southern border, where he appeared with Kirsten Nielsen. All right, joining me now, former acting director of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement and Fox News contributor, Tom Homan. Tom, thank you so much for being with us. Literally the best possible person we could have this evening to, to explain what's been going on what, and what it all means. I just want to start with a, a pretty blunt question, frankly. It seems to me that, that um, former Secretary Nielsen has been pretty much out of depth um, in that role for quite a long time now. This is good news, isn't it? Well, look, you know, first I think we need to, we need to at least respect her decision. You know, you, you got to respect somebody that takes on a job like this. I mean, this is a 24-7, 365 job. I mean, especially as she said in her letter, Congress, half of Congress don't support what she does or, or supports even enforcing immigration law, you know, and, and there has been a lot of mismessaging out there. So, I mean, I want to first thank her because she did serve her country and uh, she, 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 mm -hmm. she, she did a pretty good job. But, you know, it, but her letter is right. Her hands have been tied in many ways. But the president obviously is, is frustrated at what's going on in the southern border. He's definitely pointing in a different direction. I think we can all agree about how Congress has totally failed for decades, frankly, on, on this subject. It's something we cover here on the show uh, a lot. But it can't just be that, can it? Otherwise, there wouldn't be the need or the president wouldn't see a need to make this change. What could a new secretary do differently that would more uh, quickly deliver on what the president wants to see happen? Well, I think, you know, there's a couple of things. First of all, look, if Congress isn't going to fix, fix this legislatively and they don't want to fix it, they want this to be an issue, they want the president to fail on the border, so the Democratic leadership has no intention of fixing these loopholes, and mm -hmm. the courts keep, you know, filing temporary restraining orders, we need to do what we can operationally. Now, I've been saying for a couple of weeks, I think ICE needs to get out there, do a nationwide operation, look for these family groups and single adults who've come across the border illegally. They're had their day in court. They've had due process at great taxpayer expense. 90% of them have been ordered removed. We need to execute those orders because if those orders don't mean anything, if they're not executed, there's no mm -hmm. integrity in the entire system. The reason the Central American families keep coming up is because it's a win-win. You've got 10% chance of winning your case, and if you lose, mm -hmm. no one's making you leave. So we need to do that. I did that three and a half years ago, and almost immediate, immediate decrease in border crossings as a result, because we showed there's a consequence to deterrence. That's one thing we do right away. I would also think ICE, HSI, Homeland Security Investigations, would go down to Mexico. There's special agents that are trained in you know, financial investigations and, and drug investigations and start hammering on these cartels and these criminal organizations that are moving people from the southern Mexico to the northern Mexico and we'll work with our vetted units in Mexico to try to dismantle those organizations who are making these caravans happen. So I think everyone watching will just be nodding along and say that makes such sense, specifically on the point about the incentive that's created when you don't remove people who uh, shouldn't be here. You, you were saying you did that, but now it's not happening. What changed? What stopped that? You know, I think, look, I think there's a lot going on. I think, uh, you know, with a lot of ICE resources are being spent on the border. But it's my opinion, again, just, this is just my opinion. I was the ICE director about a year and a half. I think you need to sacrifice some of those resources on the border and concentrate on the consequence. We've got to have a consequence. Mm -hmm. And it's, people keep asking why the numbers keep increasing. Why wouldn't they? 
If there's no consequence, no deterrence, why would they stop coming? So I did it three and a half years ago. It worked. I think it's worth another try. Uh, and, you know, because, again, we need to do op operationally whatever we can to think out of the box. And the president has been doing that. You know, the president has taken executive action after executive action. Of course, he keeps getting sued by the ACLU. And now, now even the Democratic leadership is suing him for his emergency declaration. So he's going to keep taking all the executive action he can. He doesn't care if he gets sued. He likes to fight. So, you know, he'll keep taking his actions. I think CBP and ICE need to step up enforcement actions and see if we can make a difference. Well, let's hope this change does make that difference. Although, honestly, listening to you, I think my conclusion is bring back Tom Homan. Anyway, Tom, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Let's meet our guest for tonight, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter, publisher of American Greatness, Chris Buskirk, and former Bernie Sanders national staffer and founder of the Teslin Figaro Communications Group, Teslin Figaro. All right, Sarah, let's, let's start with you. You know your way around Washington uh, and the, the kind of bureaucracy, to say the least. What are your sources telling you tonight about this? Look, this is a very complicated matter right now. I mean, on the border, there, the morale is extraordinarily low. Border Patrol agents, ICE officers are really fighting a system that is not working for them. They, they can't do their job. Their hands are tied behind their back. Since 2013, just let me give you a stat here, as far as family units are concerned, in the last five years, it's a 620 percent increase in family units coming in. Mm -hmm. The new law just signed into Congress right now does not allow them to deport. I was talking to an ICE officer. He said he literally had to let in a man who had three DUIs here in the United States, had been kicked out three times, and this time came in with a child, and they could not send him back. This is what these laws are doing. Not just them. They find people with all kinds of criminal records, drug dealers. They're letting them in. If you bring in a kid, they're letting, they're letting them in. This is the loophole that needs to be closed. The asylum loophole. The asylum loophole. We also have a lot of other issues. There's not enough bed space. There's not enough resources. I tell you, one of the, one of the big things here is that the Dems are actually allowing the Sinaloa cartel and the drug cartels in Mexico to dictate our foreign policy. And I'll tell you why. Because you can't get through the border. You can't bring in illegal immigrants that are being trafficked without going through the drug cartels. And what they'll do is they'll bring them in, they'll hold them in a house, they'll hold them there until they're ready to move their contraband through. And what they'll do is they'll say, okay, we're going to send 500 illegals through this corridor. We're going to occupy all of the resources of the United States government right there. And you know what? The Border Patrol agents are listening, and it's ding, 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 ding. They can hear the sensors going off. They can hear the contraband, and they can't do a thing about it. So yeah. we're in a huge predicament. The president has been put in a very difficult position. Kirsten Nielsen, you know, she did as good as she could do. Now, maybe with someone in there, they can really enforce these laws, but it's really changing the laws yeah. well, right now to bit. change. Exactly. Yeah. Well, by, by the way, just a quick programming note, as we say, Sarah Carter, as you just realized, is a real expert on this border issue. You don't always see her on, on, on our airwaves talking about this topic. She really knows what she's talking about. We're going to be doing a special deep dive on Fox Nation on this topic. You can watch that tomorrow on Fox Nation. So if you want more on that, I suggest you uh, sign up for Fox Nation now. All right, uh, Chris. There's a real distinction here between, as we've been hearing from Tom and Sarah, the operational and the legislative. Let's just forget about You're not going to get anything out of Congress. Right. Okay, we know that. What can be changed operationally? Well, Tom Homan, Tom Homan was giving just exactly the sort of advice that people need to hear because there are things that they, that they can do operationally. Uh, things like actually, put, as he was saying, there has to be a consequence. You have to go out and find those people who've been ordered deported, who've been ordered sent back. Send them back. And what's happening is that uh, without the support, I think, honestly, without the support of Secretary Nielsen, ICE and CBP really didn't know what to do. Uh -huh. They certainly don't have the support of Congress. They need somebody. Uh, and I think maybe Secretary McAleenan may be just that person, somebody who really understands the operational issues and what they can do inside the rules in order to make sure that the people who have been adjudicated through the immigration course, that those people are sent back, and to make sure that the resources that we have in ICE and in CBP, Customs and Border Patrol, are used effectively to ensure that uh, all these people who are caught and released and then are ordered away, that they actually go back to where they came from.
Tessman? You know, I, I don't have much hope that no matter who you put in the position, you know, much will change. This is clearly the number one issue that Democrats will be um, pushing in 2020. Mm -hmm. I don't blame her for leaving. You know, it's not worth it. When you think about all the jobs you could do in the, in the private sector, <laughs> you know, to be underpaid, working for government, called a racist, having to sit before Congress, you know, repeatedly just when you're doing right. your job, you know, whether I, I'm sure everything that we do on our jobs, we may not always agree with or always be in support of, but simply just doing your job. Who wants to be the sacrificial lamb for this mess that we see in Congress? So I just really believe uh, if Republicans want to do something different on immigration, they'll just have to take back over in 2020. It's just that simple. And if Democrats want to do it, they'll have to do the same. But to put someone else in another uh, position um, to be able to make decisions and think that Democrats will not continue to make this an issue mm -hmm. and can constantly block each and every time um, they have an opportunity, I just don't think is possible. All right. Well, there we are. Um, just one last thought to leave you with um, from John Roberts uh, and our, our White House. Um, his, sources, his White House sources are telling him that one of the factors here was President Trump, this is the quote, was looking for the toughest cop around to get a grip of this situation. And the hope is that this new Secretary McAleenan is the guy to do that.